Well, hello, and I welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. And this week, a little disaster has struck the pens in use. Um, and I apologize in advance. I probably won't answer comments very quickly because I have an obligation that will be well out of internet range. So let's dive into the pens. <music> If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And if you see something you like here, please feel free to comment, perhaps on the Czechoslovakian pens, and don't get mad till you hear the explanation, or perhaps the disaster that has fallen my pens in use this week. So let's take a look at what I have inked up. And by the way, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a tie, and, and a little sweaty, I uh, stayed at school after work tonight, and I line judged the volleyball game, so <laughs> my back's a little sore from standing in one spot, because I spend most of my job on my feet, but it's always squatting down, standing up, leaning over, walking around. Uh, it's not a, teaching is not a sitting job, but it's also not a standing in one spot job, so yeah, it makes the back a little sore. So here are the pens that I'm using this week. I uh, went a little crazy. This pen, my beloved Centro pen, 100820, uh, another one, it came up for sale in my Uber pens, and I felt the need to celebrate by bringing this one out. So, as of this recording, not necessarily as of the publication, this pen is for sale on myuberpens.com. Very exciting. And, of course, I had to show it off. They actually compare it to a very similar pen to this one. This is a Central Pen 10014. This is a Central Pen Lady Celluloid. I did not know its name before. I was calling it an Isco something. But it's, it's actually a Central Pen Lady Celluloid. I still... Oops, talk on it. Hold still. I still don't know much about this one. It's a Central Pen, but it has an Isco nib, and there's no branding on it, so... Uh, Still a little up in the air what this one is. It was sold as an ISCO, but as far as I know, it's not actually a fountain pen company, so I don't know what to say. And then, to be even more exotic, I have a Scrix 419 from Turkey. I have a Senator, which I don't know its model number, because I know the model numbers of very few of my Senators. Uh, this one I wrote in the show notes as the Big Blind Cap, which you'll see why. Waterman Karen and my beloved daily writer, I Can't Live Without, Lamy 2000. Today is a milestone of sorts. I'm about to use the last page of my BOMO art journal. Uh, never fear, or fear a lot. I, I have one more BOMO art journal to work through, and then I will decide what to use as my paper for this show. It's a weekly show, and I think I've done pretty well. Uh, except for the occasional special occasion video where I... That didn't sound right. But anyway, the occasional special occasion video where I do something special. All right. Forget I said that. If I remember, I'll edit that out. <laughs> that was terrible. So my first pen is my was sold to me by myuberpens.com as a central pen 100820. Now, its current iteration that's for sale... They don't call it that. They carefully avoid a model name. And I'm wondering if that's because they had it misnamed before uh, or what. But it is the same pen. And it has this gorgeous, gorgeous celluloid with just amazing chatoyancy. You can look at my video for link under the in the show notes for... My original review of this, which I did some time ago, uh, I've learned a bit about videography since then, but, you know, it is what it is. When uh, it comes time to talk about survivor pens, I'm sure this will still be a survivor. But yeah, it came with absolutely no branding, except on the pen case, which I don't have handy. Gold filled, generous ink window full of you know dark ink so you can't really see it cellulite is even on the grip section yeah and then there is this amazing nib so it's an isco 14 carat 
585. And in my video on this pen, I discuss a little bit of the history of Central Pen. And this is where I point out, uh, for those of you who are about to tell me, there is no such country as Czechoslovakia. Central Pen is based in the Czech Republic. You are correct. But in the 1960s, when this pen was made, it was still Czechoslovakia. So this is a Central Pen. See that? Hardly any effort at all. I mean, it's an effort not to spread the tines at all. Let's see if I can do it with a model number. Uh, no real nib size to it, but I'd call that a fine or extra fine. And my ink here is Palette. No, it is not. It is Pelican. Pelican. 4001 Violet. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> I like the ink too, by the way. You know, Violet's, I'm going to mess up this drawing here. Uh, what is it, four? I don't see Violet's out where I live in North Dakota. I remember them as a kid. You know, they had like a long petal down here and then other petals to the side and then kind of a yellowish center um, the wild ones of course the tame ones came in many colors but I don't know they just don't grow seem to grow wild in North Dakota at least I haven't seen them so that was probably awful and I apologize to all violets out there who are now shrinking which is a joke all right now the next pen I have for you is a Centro Pen, again, 10014. This one, I know its model number because Centro Pen was kind enough to print it on the pen. Uh, I was reading that sometimes for the really high-class pens, they wouldn't print any branding. So this is obviously not a high-class pen, but dang, look at that gorgeous celluloid. Gorgeous celluloid. And I appreciate they're kind of different, these uh, glassy finials. This is a pen I really need to review. I've had it long enough. I think I've had it for a year at least. Screw cap. It doesn't have the nifty blind cap like the other one. It has a, a captured converter, I guess we could call it. I've seen this kind of converter on a lot of the Soviet pens that I've used. But this one is uh, more refined and much better made than those Soviet ones, so... There is that. So Centro Pen. Oh, by the way, I should mention that the nib is steel. Let's see if we can get this in the light correctly. And uh, this nib actually says Centro Pen on it. And then a whole lot of other information. And I hope it turns out better when I review this on the computer than what I'm seeing in the preview because wow so if it doesn't it says central pen iridium 42 not a flex nib at all not a bad writer uh, the ink in it believe it or not is uh, Iroshizuku Chikurin Uh, I need to look, I forgot to um, find out what I had in it last, because apparently whatever it was, I didn't do a good job cleaning it out. But you can see, even though it's uh, not a flex writer, it is a good writer. And even though uh, it's very olive colored, <laughs> let's see, let's add a bit of a stem to the violet. Yeah, am I using another green tonight, or do I need to add leaves? Uh-oh. Well, let's find out what's in the lady celluloid. I wrote September 5th, 2018 as its ink color. So, this will be a surprise to me as much as to you. What's in this pen? Uh, I have no idea why I wrote that. That is awkward. I'll fix it before I post it to the show notes. But again, gorgeous celluloid. I almost prefer this color 
I prefer the other pen, but this is gorgeous. Now just, uh, what is it called? A red amber. So it's a little bit smaller pen, I guess, for ladies. I don't know. I guess they like small pens, or at least Central Pen thinks they do. Uh, well, another difference besides being smaller, no ink window. I guess they think ladies don't like to know their ink level either. Uh, the nib is a little smaller. I need to do a Central Pen video when I have all my Central Pens inked up because as I'm sitting here, I remember that there's one that isn't. So this is another Isco nib, 14 karat, 585. And I have to post it. It's kind of like a Caveco Sport. Okay, good. We can do the leaves in this, whatever it is. I think I know. Whoops, ladies. Uh, oh, lady. Wow. Now, you may have heard that more. I'm not sure how much the sound will pick up. I definitely get more feedback with this one, and it's not quite the line variation. Uh, still has nice line variation. And I don't know if it's because it's a smaller nib or the tines are maybe slightly misaligned. I really don't know. Uh, the ink is a Sailor Gentle... Uh, it's a green tea, so let me see if I used it any time recently. Waka Uguisu. So very feedbacky. I am, I, you know, I'm hesitant to do anything to it because I that's not something I have much experience with. I don't remember what. The leaves for this kind of for a violet look like I feel like they're not anything special because that phrase shrinking violet comes from the fact that they're just not a flower that you see they just kind of hide and you have to be looking to see how pretty they are All right, my next pen doesn't look like much it's another Probably Central Pen or perhaps Isco. In the show notes, I call it Central Pen slash Isco because I really don't know. I can't even find if the, why the nibs are branded Isco, the gold nibs. And I can't find uh, if there was a brand called uh, Isco. I had a comment from somebody who never responded back with more detail, way, way back, who suggested that uh, Isco was a Yugoslavian brand. And again, I know, no Yugoslavia anymore either. But uh, back at the time, it still existed. So generous ink window. Not the fine celluloid of the first pen. Just a plain black plastic. But wait till you watch it right. So again, not quite as flexible as this, but pretty darn flexible. Uh, the ink I have in this is Sailor Gentle. Uh, another one of those funny names that I can't keep in my head. Fuji. Musume, which uh, I believe is Wisteria. When I say funny name, of course, to my English speaking ears. Oh, what do I do with it? Maybe there's a Wisteria Arbor up here. I, I always think they're kind of cool. Just hanging down. Something that would be really hard to create in North Dakota with uh, the sort of weather we have, but very cool nonetheless. I always like the pictures of them. And that's the Central Pens, which brings us to my Scrix 419. A Turkish pen, piston filling, not much branding on it, generous ink window, steel nib, 
script branded Scrix. Not a hundred percent sure if the feed is ebonite or plastic. Uh, the only real branding is an S on the clip and on you know Scrix on the nib obviously and then on the cap band it says Scrix and then it says Scrix again and nowhere does it say 419. So anyway it's a Turkish brand and once again I am looking at my ink selection all of a sudden wondering why do I have all these dark inks And yes, I didn't misspell that. It does have two S's. This is a brand I know very little about. I finished up the last of this sample bottle. I remember liking it a little bit better in the last pen I had it in. Not bad. It's kind of a off color purple. And then I have what in the show notes I call... Senador with the big blind cap because I don't know a name for it. There's no model number. I, I'm struggling even you know using German uh, Google to find it. But you uncap it, and this is rather mysterious. Uh, segmented ink window, just like the last Senator I reviewed, which I also still don't know the model number. But check out what happens when you unscrew the blind cap. That's the blind cap. And it's metal with some kind of coating on it. I have never seen a pen like this. So obviously the threads of the blind cap are way up here. I, I've just, I've never seen a blind cap like that ever. So I've had this one floating around. I usually ink up the other Senator more often because I just like it. I like the way it looks better. But uh, you know, I think it's the same nib, but man, that's weird. So if somebody could fill me in, that would be just super duper awesome. So we'll call this Senator Big Blind Cap. The ink in it I have is Pelican Dunkelgrün. Which is German for dark green, obviously. <clears throat> uh, last but not least, or not last or least, I should say, my penultimate pen, haha, is my Waterman Karen. Heading towards empty, but not empty yet. May or may not be in this show next week. But my Waterman Karen. A very worthwhile modern pen. Has a medium nib on it. I'm, I've thought about doing a broad nib, but for reasons we'll get to, I probably will hold off on that now. Uh, the ink in it is Noodlers. Black Swan. In English Rose. And the dehumidifier just kicked on. So, let me deal with that. <clears throat> so the last part of my tale involves the Lamy 2000, which normally rides right here. Uh, it, it will not be riding there for a while. Because something terrible happened this morning. I was riding with it. And then, I put the cap, just slipped the cap on to turn around and pick up some, a book off of my bookshelf in my classroom. And caught it with my sleeve. And down it went onto the floor, cap fell off, and it went boop, straight down. <laughs> and the tines on the nib went whoop, literally. So I did the best I could to adjust it with my fingers. It's writing decently, but it is no longer the fine nib that I want as my daily writer. So right now I am trying to decide, I'm going to look at prices. Do I get the nib repaired? 
you know, in other words, probably a new nib, or do I buy a new Fine Point Lamy 2000? Because I'll tell you what, I'm not doing without my Fine Point Lamy 2000. I don't care how many nice pens you shove under my nose. I want to use my nice Fine Point Lamy 2000 to do my daily writing. Grr! And of course, a whole lot of stupid, stupid, stupid. So a uh, little bit of both. But we'll show you how it's writing right now. And then I'll show you something else. So this is my bent Lamy 2000. I'd say it's writing like a medium. And it's reasonably smooth even though it's bent. Mainly what happened is the tines just got a little further apart and I just can't, them get, can't get them any closer together. So it looked worse this morning after it fell on the hard floor in my classroom. But still, no longer what I consider a daily writer. So we'll call it an X fine. So I'm trying to decide, you know, do I like it like this for something else possibly, or do I just want to repair it, or do I want, you know, to buy a new fine? I just have to find out how much it costs to get a new nib for it, basically. So this is, of course, still using Lamy Black. So it happens even to good people and good pens. Last pen I want to show you isn't on those show notes because I, I did it at the spur of the moment. I'm going to a cross country meet. That's part of why I'll be out of internet range for a lot of time tomorrow. Or, I mean, Saturday. And, uh, well, I guess tomorrow by the time you see this. So I was looking for a pocket pen. And I grabbed this because I, I knew I had a whole bunch of black cartridges to put in it. Turned out I couldn't find any. And uh, so I stuck a diamine ancient copper in it and then almost immediately saw my black cartridges because I just don't use cartridges much. So this is a Caveco Lilliput. It will serve as a bit of an experience. Uh, I guess I'll find out. Does do you mean ancient diamine, sorry, diamine ancient copper form crusties when it's in a, a Caveco Lilliput? I don't know. I will find out. Meanwhile, I do have several vintage Lamy pens, which I could ink up and use in the place of the Lamy 2000. I also have my Caveco V14S, which uh, if you ever look at my YouTube channel, the page with all my videos on it and so on, uh, you'll see the V14S at the top because I, I like that pen a lot. Don't write with it enough, but I like it a lot. So I may use that as my daily writer. I've got time to decide before tomorrow. Uh, the Lilliput is what's going with me on the cross-country meet. So uh, yeah, that'll be fun. So those are the pens I'm using this week. Uh, a wide selection of Czechoslovakian pens. If what you saw with them interests you, you may wish to check out myuberpens.com. Um, there's only one central pen there, like mine. Like this one, the pretty brown. And so grab it while it's still there if you want to spend that much cash. I am embarrassed to admit that I did spend that much cash to buy it, but I love the pen a lot, so I'm not feeling too guilty, and it's a little piece of history to boot. And not many people are going to have a pen like it. So, if videos like this interest you, where I explore fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. If you'd like to talk about Czechoslovakian pens, Yugoslavian pens, if there is such a thing, or perhaps bending the nib on your favorite pen, please feel free to leave a comment down below. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.